What is happening budget builders and welcome back to the channel. We're here just a few towns over from where we live and saw a post on Marketplace. They were fixing to scrap everything on this property and we had to come out and save it. So let's show you what we got here. How's it going? I'm Michael and this is Budget Builds. My dad and I bring rusty, crusty old cars back to life. Now the first thing here is this pristine 1973 GMC motorhome. Now if you don't know what these are, these are 455 powered front wheel drive General Motors motorhomes. I mean, they're flipping cool. Now this one's this one's been lived in by quite a few people over the years, but it is low mileage and obviously we'd like to see if we can get it running. Also, <laughs> we have this kind of cool uh, 1983 720 king cab nissan a pretty cool little truck pretty straight pretty solid so we want to drag it out of here and we'll see if we can get it running as well and last but not least we have these two Datsun 1600 roadsters yeah, i said that really weird now these have been back here, it looks like, since about since about 1979. Uh, I, the, I was told the motor to that one is in the trunk. This one appears to be complete. They were covered, and obviously the cover's gone and disintegrated over the years. Now we're gonna, the big, they're, they're on kind of a deadline, so we're just trying to get everything dragged out of here, dragged, drug out of here, and individually, we'll do some it runs on these and see if we can get everything running. And so let's go ahead and get started. First thing we're gonna get drug out of here is that Nissan pickup truck. It's going in the right direction, so. Yeah. It's dragging this back wheel. Yeah, All right. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, it just drags the butt around. Good enough. All right, so the first of those four vehicles that we saved from going to the scrapyard that we're going to try to get to run is this 1983 Nissan 720 pickup truck. So this truck has actually been off the road since roughly 2001 was the last time it was registered, which wasn't too terribly long ago. I guess that's about 20 years ago now. Oh my goodness, that's about 20 years ago now. Okay. 20 years ago <laughs> it's been sitting for about 20 years and it's time to see if it'll run obviously there was quite a few squatters that were hanging out there and they started borrowing some stuff off of the vehicles to haul to the scrapyard which included i don't know why plug wires this air cleaner they cut these hoses because they were obviously fixing to snatch that brass or copper radiator there and broke i mean i don't know they started snatching stuff safely snakefully thankfully they didn't get too much off of this one obviously there's some stuff on that motor home and those dotsons that might be missing because they were borrowing quite a bit first thing let's go ahead and pull these spark plugs out let's verify the condition of our cylinders this one's kind of cool this is a four cylinder with eight spark plugs so two plugs per cylinder and let's go to make sure this engine turns over and see if it's locked up or not because if you noticed i'm not sure if when we got there it was pouring rain and this hood was up and i don't know how long it was up it doesn't look like it got a ton of moisture in it so we may have just saved this thing from actually getting stripped even more let's we'll see what happens
while I'm right here. It's black, fairly gassy, a little on the thick side, not too bad, but there's no water in it. So that's good. First plug. It's kind of nice to see somebody actually put an ICs on that one many years ago. You see no moisture, a little dark, little sooty, definitely an old auto light spark plug. This thing needs a good set of NGKs. Another pretty good looking spark plug. Whew. And another, he's definitely, this old guy was definitely burning, say a little bit of oil. Just a little on the oil foul side. Not terrible, terrible, but not too shabby. Let me see for the heck of it. I can get a hand on this. So, <laughs> oh yeah, nice. <laughs> he already had it for us. Let's real quick get those cylinders soaked down with some PB blaster, just so we know that if there is any kind of rust or anything on the piston rings, that hopefully that'll keep it from dragging or scarring up and it'll keep everything moving nice and freely for us. Let's go ahead and throw a battery in this thing and see if it'll turn over. One thing I'll show you really quick I thought was kind of cool, and it was kind of sad to see because all of this right here, the reason it's in the floorboard, was strung out all over the yard where this truck was. I think up until fairly recently when we actually went there to, to save these, these were actually all up under car covers and everything. What's kind of cool is you've got like your original book. You can tell these were all soaked. We had, to, we had them sprawled out drying. This is your clear on radio. This was actually kind of cool. It was an option. It's got an option sheet. Now this is cool. Look at that. The original window sticker. This truck was $6,870 in 1983. Holy cow. This is kind of cool. This is actually the importation stickers. This is what they stuck. This has the VIN and everything on it. As the truck went through being imported, this get, obviously there must have been multiple sheets because they didn't use many of these. But that wouldn't work with that. And then it's got a bunch of all the old registration and and inspection receipts and everything to this. This is kind of cool. This is more of that importation papers and stuff. And there's that radio stuff, warranty information. Like I said it was sad to see it piled around, but it's cool to have it all. Because it's not a lot. I've had one other Nissan, actually 300ZX, that came with all this paperwork like this. And it's so cool to have all of it. Alright, so we've got a nice battery stuck in here. That terminal's quite pretty. And we got it on there. Yes, this is in a red negative, but that's what it's going to be for today. Let's see if we got anything. All right, here's our key. Will you hold this for me, please? Pretty please. All right, got it in neutral. It's gonna blow up. It's gonna blow up, man. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? This is scary. All right, here we go. Turns over. I heard a spark. There's no wires. That thing just jumped. That thing's got some hellacious spark. It jumped out of the side of the coal. Quit beeping. So maybe is that the seat? Hold on. I see a seatbelt. Now we're good. <laughs> <laughs> the blower works. Let's see if the radio works. We can jam out. This thing's fancy. 
And look at this radio. This is the Clarion. How do you turn it on? Probably don't. Wait, that's not the radio. This is the radio. Oh, it's got a, it's a cassette stereo thing. There's the radio. Oh yeah. Works real good. Before we go too far, just to be safe, as always, let's go to change that oil really quick. So this two-wheel drive truck has the special ordered off-roading extreme skid plate. Look at that, it covers the whole engine. Where's the engine at? It's under that skid plate. Way back up under there. Oh my goodness. Right there's a drain plug. Let me get to it. Good grief. I had to stick a 716, 7, what? 7 eighths on there. This thing's clean underneath. Well, it's not really clean, but good grief, that's like diesel oil. All right, we got our ancient, it's kind of weird, it's like bubbling off. Old frame filter pulled off of there. Did have some oil pushing through. So that's a good, oh, burping. <laughs> good sign. Weird, crazy long shank on that thing. I got to pull it way out. Funnel, what funnel? Oh boy. Hide in this water. Don't shake it. Oh, Look at you. <laughs> I had it going in there so nice and you shook it. <laughs> Come clean your mess up. <laughs> All right, so I did some cleaning up and some wire end adding. We've got two new terminals on here. Just so we know we have good connections everywhere and everything's working just as it should. And again, even though we do have an ignition switch, this thing is, I don't, it's not even like the right one. It's all kinds of janky messed up. Let's go ahead and once again, with those new connections, let's verify we have turning overing. Oh yeah. Now that we've got all of that taken care of, let's go ahead and verify fire and then we can start figuring out our fueling system. All right, so as you can see, we did find some wires. They're not all matching. Some of these are old Comet wires we had laying around. Obviously, I don't know why, but we save stuff like that. And it comes in handy with stuff like this because this happens to be a four cylinder eight plug. So we needed eight wires. It had one coil wire. I'm surprised they took all but one coil wire and we had one extra coil wire here. So I've got this plug in here and ground it out. Now this is just some random one I had left over from something, but it'll tell us if we have fire or not. Let's see what we got there. All right, so we actually do have fire. It's a little odd. While you're turning over, it has no fire. As soon as you let off the key and it has those couple revolutions after you let off the key, it sparks. So it has some kind of funky electrical issue. I'm not exactly sure. I hadn't seen something like that before. So I may have to actually jump the coils out. But to begin with, let's get a fuel system hooked up to this thing and see if it'll by chance run. Now, although I did hear that fuel pump kick on a couple times, this thing has not had a gas cap on it. It's extremely crusty and I have a feeling that fuel tank is as well. It probably needs to go ahead and be dropped, checked over, cleaned out. So of course, we got our boat tank. I just, I want fresh fuel to run to this carburetor if there's any chance that the carburetor will run without be, without digging into. Got our fuel filter. I've ran it to our little fuel pump. Now this is just our little two to three, it's a 30 gallon per hour. It's a two to three PSI, which is good for your carburetors. You know, you that's a good range for you to be at if you have something that's a little overpowered you want to put a pressure regulator but two to three is pretty good for most of our carburetors that's what i use on all of our will it runs that are carbureted and then i just have that obviously run to our power and then doo -doo -doo, we have our ground here you see it filling that bowl up and now initially when i first did this 
it actually started spewing fuel out from here and a couple other places. And so the fix for that was that right there. And it seems to have fixed our, <laughs> it seems to have fixed our stuck float. Let's turn this thing over and see what it does. You can see this fuel line it was actually that fuel pumps running and it is pumping some horrendously awful stanky crusty fuel out oh my goodness so i need to get up under here figure out where that fuel pump is and disconnect it because that stinks we don't want an engine fire that wouldn't be a good idea huh just kidding why don't we pull the fuse for it but i did notice something really cool super smart the only other vehicle i've had that has had this was the mg Drain plug. So if you ever get water in your gas, you get some crappy gas, you let it sit for a while, put some fresh gas in, slosh it around, drain it, do that a couple times. And this tank looks okay from underneath. It may be a little rusty on the inside, but it's definitely something we can take care of in the near future. And I just noticed, of course, it's catless. Where it was, they were snatching everything they possibly could have. I'm afraid there wouldn't have been much left of this truck if we hadn't got to it. Just a little sooner. <laughs> All right, so the boss came home with some Crestables. If you don't like these, I don't know who you are. Anyway. Let's give it another try. That ignition issue might be getting us give it one more go Now, even though the carburetor is not super happy on this thing, that just goes to show Japanese engineering for you. Just like that little BMW, even after sitting for going on 20 years now, this thing wants to run. What you doing, babe? Excuse me? Where is it, baby? Okay, let's go get it. All right. So this right here is our fix for that lower radiator hose. Now in all reality, this is only a temporary fix. This is not something that you want to stick on your vehicle and expect it to last a long time. After some heat, this will deteriorate, but it can get you off of the side of the road if need be. All right, so I took it and actually cut it off straight. Now we have a lot better seal and we had very little coolant loss. Now with this engine nice and full of coolant, we can fire it off and let it have some more run time and see how much better it smooths out.
Now, as far as driving goes, surprisingly, it's a little low, probably only fronts or rears. We have some brake pedal, but we have no clutch actuation. Don't you just like a cable actuated clutch? Hydraulic funness. Let's dig in and see if we could potentially bleed what's there. I know both the brake and the, and the clutch were completely empty when we picked up the truck and we filled them up. The brakes were able to pump up at least a little bit. They'd probably be better with a bleeding. The clutch doesn't want to do anything. So let's start messing with it and seeing what we come up with. All right, so initially I tried pumping it up using that hitch there to hold it down. We got some fresh fluid coming through. I got a little bit of push through here. Not sure what that doicky is. And then underneath, oh, I was able to start getting some fluid flowing. But that slave cylinder right there is completely rusted solid. You can see the truck's rust free, but it's been muddy. And obviously the boots torn up and stuff. And so just the moisture of the mud being under there let that gal rust up. So I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can get one of those on the way really quickly and I might go ahead and just for the heck of it, grab a master as well so we can get it pushing through and get our clutch working. All right, so I did go ahead and pull that master out and as you can see, I'm not sure if you can tell, it was puking fluid out the backside and you can see where it started peeling it up. So this old gal was shot. So you've got that piston that rides back and forth there and it's got seals and all. What will happen is it get a little bit of rust and that first couple times you start trying to use it, it'll score it really bad. And then she just leaks and you can see crusty in there. So thankfully that's only about a $28 part and boom, we have a new one there. And it's pretty easy. You've just got a pin in the rear which just has this little clip. The pin slides out. You can tell that thing's got a lot of miles on it. Look how worn out that pin is. <laughs> Once you do that, you've just got your line, which is a 10 millimeter, and then you've got two 12 millimeter nuts. Let's go and get that thing slap backed on. Sla what did I just say? Slapped back, slapped back on. And then we can climb up underneath and get that slave cylinder replaced. Now, one thing you want to remember to do, which I forgot, is to actually take and run this out because this is your clutch adjustment because this is going to fit a few different vehicles. And you just want to get that adjusted to where it, the pedal sits all the way back out. Oh my. And you'll run your jam nut in and tighten it up. We're gonna slide our pin back in and get it clipped in. Alrighty. And there she sits. We've got these two 15 millimeter bolts. We'll have that brake line in the rear, brake line, well, clutch line, that line in the rear we need to get loose. Well, couldn't get any fluid to push down to it and it would have never moved even if it had. That thing is crispy. We got a nice pretty new one ready to go. And there we have it. I did end up having to take Oh, that jam nut loose right there, that br that line, so I could twist the hose around where it needed to be. But it's looking pretty good on there. Wow, I'm making a mess. Hey, quiet for a minute. Chill. Now he's just gonna keep on yelling back there. Before we take this beautiful piece of machinery on its maiden voyage, I can't help but roll it back and wash it off. It's first bath in probably 
going on 20 years. Alright, well, apparently, <laughs> my voice just, ugh, all this pollen. Hello? Well, apparently I didn't hit the record button when I was cleaning this thing up, so you missed the action there. It cleans up pretty well. I do have to say, I don't know who decided to paint this truck this absolutely incredibly gorgeous brown that is so much nicer than that horribly ugly metallic blue that this truck was. So much nicer. Alright, so we ended up getting rained out last night. I did roll the truck down to the bottom here so we can move some stuff around. Now we know the truck somewhat runs. We got the clutch kind of working, but now it's time. Guys, that's your, that's your cue. What are you supposed to say? But now it's time. See if it can drive. Look at you guys. Got to look at the camera. <laughs> see if it can drive. See if it can drive. <laughs> Let's see if it'll drive. Yeah, we gotta get moving. Your spider webs. Are there spider webs? Are there spider webs? It's not a super. There you go. Now we're not getting out on any roads or anything. We're just putting around right here. All right, guys, you ready? Let's see. Well, we'll see if this thing starts. Fuel pump. Filling up the bowl. When it wants to, <laughs> that carburetor is pitiful with that wide open manifold. Oh my goodness, this thing is obnoxious. What do you guys think, though? Yeah. <laughs> They're very excited. Buy some tape out here. <laughs> All right, y'all. So this is a few days after we wrapped up that video, and we did some running around with the kids there. And if you didn't notice, the truck ran good to begin with. And as we drove it around a little bit, it started running pretty rough. We were dropping cylinders and just not having a good time with it. And I started messing with the truck a little bit and actually checked the fuel that we had just purchased and it had over a gallon of water in it. That's why this thing started running so bad. Now, once I got that flushed out, tuned it up a little bit more when I had some more time to mess with it, I think we got it running pretty good. Let's run it, let's fire it back up here really quick. Let me show you how it's doing. Buzz it around a little bit. <laughs>
So as you can hear, we actually have that nice low idle like you want with a manual transmission vehicle, probably in that 550 to 600 range. It's very smooth. We have good progression through the RPM range there and everything sounding just like it should. So watch your fuel because as a mechanic, I remember this would really, really hurt you. You'd put a lot of time into something and then something dumb like that would screw you all up. I mean, you got because I chased all over this thing trying to figure out what was going on and it was an outside factor. So always remember when you start getting into this, check your bases again because something like that can be the issue. Obviously, it's still just a beater truck, but it is cool. It's a, it's a one owner, fully documented, classic Nissan pickup truck. This will be a really cool little ride for somebody. It's not my kind of uh, vehicle. Well, it is. It's my kind of vehicle. It's a little bit newer than what I'm into, other than something like the BMW. But this one, we're going to try to find a good home for it, and somebody can enjoy it. Oh, well, that will wrap it up for this episode. Obviously, it's a great little running truck right now. It was so good. It was. It's such a good feeling to be able to save something that was most definitely going to go to the scrapyard from from dying at that point. It can go on, live on some other. Someone else can enjoy this truck and thoroughly, completely bring it back to life. If you guys enjoy these kind of will it runs, the rebuilds that we have going on, be sure to the subscribe button, notification bell. Go down in the comment section, leave us a comment, hit that like button if you're enjoying what we're doing. Peace out and catch y'all on the flip side. <laughs>